how you've clicked on to today's, well, it's not really a tropical tidbit. I'm going to be talking more about winter stuff today for once, but I'm trying to cover myself here by throwing in Hurricane Kenneth over here in the Eastern Pacific, which is definitely worth checking out. Category 4 hurricane, not anymore, but he was back when he had this eye in here and was the strongest hurricane now that we've seen this late in the season in the Eastern Pacific as far as records go. And so this is a very impressive storm, moving into some stable air off to the northwest now, and he'll be weakening and dissipating out here. But very impressive storm back here when he had that eye. Very pretty to look at and no threat to any land areas. So very perfect record-breaking storm that we can all love and cherish for a long time. Now, I normally don't talk a lot about the winter, but for some reason this year I have been very interested in it. Can't really explain why. I'm just a weather geek over here, so I'm just randomly checking these things out. And it's starting to interest me a little bit. First of all, I have a short-term note about the ensembles for the next 10 days, which I think is rather interesting to look at in terms of educational purposes. This is the GFS ensembles, 500 millibar out to day 10. And this is what has been getting some people a little bit excited in here because look, at it uh, digs a trough right into the eastern United States and it starts to turn things cold down in the southeast United States and this starts getting into a positive PNA look where we get the warmth up in Alaska and the cold down here in the southeast and all of a sudden it starts to look like shades of the last couple of years where we get all the cold bottled up down here. But if we look at the European ensembles for the same time, we still have the trough trying to come in here, but it meets resistance from the Atlantic Ridge down here, and it quickly lifts out. And look, we have a flatter jet in here, more anticyclonically curved, and we have warmer temperatures over the eastern United States, and it actually has it warm in the east over here, and all the cold is bottled up in the west. And the idea behind this here is we have to pick, as a forecaster, or potential forecasters which ensemble is more likely to be correct. Now the GFS here has a big trough and the axis comes all the way down from basically the North Pole down deep into the southeast United States and the first thing we should think about when we see this is the fact that it's pretty hard to pull this off. It is not impossible and it has happened before but when you have air coming down from so far north what's happening is up here near the pole the Earth is rotating a lot about its axis. You have a lot of planetary vorticity associated with the airflow. Down near the equator, there is less planetary spin, and you therefore, when the air comes from a pla uh, comes from high spin to low spin, it has to gain relative spin to the Earth's surface in order to balance that imbalance. And so when it comes down, it wants to buckle into a trough base because the trough base is a cyclonically curved vorticity area, which means that it is balancing itself out by rounding that trough base. So the trough doesn't really like to come this far south. The other thing is that there's no blocking up here near Greenland in the Hudson Bay. Generally, when you want cold to get trapped down here in the eastern United States like we've had the last couple of winters, you want blocking ridging over here so that the air can get trapped beneath. We don't have that. The Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation, better known as the NAO for short, has been positive so far and it has not wanted to leave this configuration. You can see all the all the low pressure up here near the pole. We've got strong jets all over the place running around. It's actually pretty nice to see this because we've been getting so used to all this blocking over the Arctic for the last few winters and uh, this is different now. And yes it could flip and we haven't begun December yet but usually almost every cold La Nina winter that I've looked at that's cold in the East United States has the NAO flip to negative before December, usually October and November, but we've had it positive and the Arctic vortex is still up here. And without this blocking, again, it's hard to get the cold air to really want to come down this far. The other thing is that if cold air is going to come diving all the way to the south, it needs a good reason to come. And a lot of the times a good reason can be upward motion in the southwest Atlantic or tropical Atlantic in general because of warm water, which allows the cold air to slide south and uh, lowers the heights in here, which allows the trough to come farther south. And we have not had the MJO coming into the areas that are really favorable for that. It's coming out of Octans 8 and 1 now in a weak amplitude. This is where it would be favorable, but it, now it's going into the Indian Ocean, Octans 3 and 4 here over the next couple of weeks, and this supports ridging over the southeast United States, not troughing, because then there's sinking air over the Atlantic, which raises the height field. So that's not particularly favorable for that, but we will see what happens. It would be a very interesting situation to have the cold show up here for a part of December. Won't probably last the whole winter. And now we're going to talk a little bit about the long-term winter. And the reason this matters is because it affects the hurricane season down the road, and I'll get to that. 
Now here is the 500 millibar height pattern for a very typical cold PDO winter. This is the average pattern during a negative PDO which we currently have in the Pacific and we can see the Arctic vortex is over western Canada. You get the ridge west of Alaska so it's really really darn cold up here and then you get the ridging and warmth over the East United States. Now despite this a lot of forecasts have had a lot of cold over here for the eastern United States for this upcoming winter and the reason being that they are counting on blocking showing back up here because of the negative NAO and the fact that it's going into a multi-decadal cycle where it's predominantly negative, that doesn't mean we can't get a winter where it's positive. And again, normally it would have flipped by now and so far it has not shown any signs of turning around. So if we don't get the blocking, it's going to be pretty hard to bring all the cold in down here. But here's something else that's also interesting to look at about this winter. If we take the normal PDO, and then if we assume that the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, is going to stay positive, look at the winters where that happened during La Nina, and we get 1975, 1989, and 2008, the winter of 07, 08, 88, 89, and 74, 75. And look what happens here. Uh, the Everything gets squished down because you've got the amplification is decreased because you get the Arctic vortex stronger over here. It squishes everything down, squishes the ridge west of the United States, and then it allows cold air to actually dig deeper into the western United States. Notice the difference here. The jet's up here, and then it shifts down here a little bit, and you get much colder air down as far as Texas and in the Four Corners region of the United States. And this is where you can get a lot of mountain snows, a lot of Denver snowstorms in situations like this. And you can see that the the Greenland low here, the Icelandic low, is strong because the NAO is positive, but we still have ridging over the southeastern United States because of the resistance from the Atlantic Ridge and the air piling up against the Appalachians because of the Earth spinning at a different rate because of the La Nina. So we get all this going on here. And in general, the positive Arctic Oscillation favors more cold in the west. And there's another thing that should be noticed about this winter so far. If we look at the current water temperatures globally, notice that the Indian Ocean is by far the warmest basin right now in the tropical areas. And there's a lot of warm water here. And usually, it is a lot colder during a second year La Nina. This isn't characteristically warm. Now, the Indian Ocean follows the Enzo very closely. So when you get a warm tongue El Nino out here, generally, this warms up quite a bit and when you get a cool tongue like we have now it generally cools down. Now if this was last year normally the heat will get left here for a little while and it takes a little bit longer for it to cool down because the El Nino just had flipped but we have had this La Nina now for quite a while since early 2010 and by now the Indian Ocean should be cooled off but it is not. It is well above normal for this time of year which means this time of this time in the climatic cycle. So what this means is that there's favored upward motion in here for the winter. And what I did is I took the MJO in phase three, which is what is favored in this region. In fact, you can see, remember, it's going in here right now for the next couple of weeks. But in general, it's going to be weighted towards that. If we take all the days where the MJO is strongly in phase three, we have lots of upward motion here. So if we look at strong upward motion during the winter in the northern hemisphere and look at the 500 millibar pattern, this is what happens. Heights drop over southern Asia, as we might expect. And therefore, you're forcing the jet to come south and then bump up and buckle right just east of Japan and this draws the vortex the Arctic vortex back into Alaska and it draws it farther west which again allows colder air to come down into the western United States in here and of course it's still warm in the east so this these two signals here a warm Indian Ocean and the strong Arctic Oscillation both favor cold air coming deeper into the western United States than it typically does in a negative PDO that might be something to watch out for this winter but we're not really seeing the same kind of signaling for cold in the eastern United States that we have for the last couple of winters. This is this year's sea surface temperatures minus last year at this time. Notice how much colder it is near Greenland over here. Now when the water is cold, remember what happens. That means the air above it is also cooled by the water. And so the air becomes more dense and the heights come down and therefore you get less blocking up here and this is not nearly supportive of the kind of blocking that we had last year. It is also cooler by a bit in the tropical Atlantic and you can see it's still a little warm in here but it's not really it's not really hot the way it was and when you cool this off you don't get as much upward motion you don't allow the cold air to come diving in which a lot which can happen sometimes even during La Nina winters. People are starting I hopefully but some people hopefully aren't starting to forget that La Ninas are 
almost always warm in the eastern United States. It's very hard to pull off an actual cold La Nina. It's only happened about four times in the last 60 years, and it will happen again. But another thing is that we've never had two in a row. We've never had two La Nina winters in a row that were cold in the eastern United States. We've had it happen once, but never back to back. And there are some interesting things to consider about that, but I'll leave that for another time. And again, the reason this matters is if we have another cold winter in these United States, then we can get warmer water for the next hurricane season, just like we did last year. Remember, the La Nina was, it behaved poorly, let it become cold in here so the water became warm, and we had the ugly hurricane season this year, 19 or 20 named storms, which is more than was expected for a second year La Nina. But if we get a warm winter in the in the United States, in the eastern United States, then the NAO is positive up here. We get ridging over the Atlantic, which drives the trained winds stronger across the Atlantic, evaporates the water, and cools it off in the tropics. So we deplete the heat content in here, which means next year could be a weaker hurricane season than both this year and last year, and we could have even fewer storms down there, which is why this whole winter thing matters a lot. So we shall see what happens and enjoy this winter. I will probably talk about this more um, periodically as time goes on, and I'll have more videos detailing some of these things for you. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.